both of office prior to even um, doing the call to order. We don't have a quorum the way it stands right now because we have three new members. So we're going to have, uh, Jason, you're going to be up first. We're going to have you swear you in first. Here we go. Put your left on the hand in the Bible, please. Oh, thank you. Yes. I don't talk very loud anyway. Please repeat after me. I, Jason Norby. I, Jason Norby. Do solemnly swear to support the Constitution. Do solemnly swear to support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Minnesota. The Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And to discharge faithfully and to discharge faithfully the duties of the office of council member the duties of the office of council member of the city of north st paul minnesota of the city of north st paul minnesota to the best of my judgment and ability to the best of my judgment and ability so help me god so help me god congratulations there you are thank you. that next thank you cassie <laughs> raise your right hand. Put your put your left hand on there and okay. raise your right hand. I Cassidy Schwer. I Cassidy Schwer. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And to discharge faithfully. And to discharge faithfully. The duties of the office of council member. The duties of the office of council member. Of the city of North St. Paul, Minnesota. Of the city of North St. Paul, Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. There you are. Yeah. Yes, you want to do it right away? Yep. yep. All right. We have a little birthday. This evening. Yes. Can you come back up here? How old are you today? Six. Well, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. You ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Emily. Happy birthday to you. Yay. It should have done that, shouldn't I? I just thought of that, too. Figure that out on week two. Hello. Hi there. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. I, John Monge, G, I, John Monge, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, to support the Constitution of the United States, to support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and to discharge faithfully, and to discharge faithfully, the duties of the office of mayor, duties of the office of mayor, of the City of North St. Paul, Minnesota, of the City of North St. Paul, Minnesota, to the best of my judgment and ability, to the best of my judgment and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll give you that to you. I asked if I could say a few words before we started, so here we go. 
I wanted to thank the, the former mayor and the council for all the work they've done over the years. And we appreciate the leadership and the support that you gave the city and you're handing it over to us and we're, we're taking that responsibility very seriously. So I wanna thank the even ones that are still here on ours and plus the former ones as well. I also wanna thank the new members that they're doing the time to serve the community and I appreciate and the city appreciates all the work that's gonna be, that's gonna take for all of us to do it. Just doing a few notes here. Some of the other ones is when I was talking to different people, we're probably the youngest mayor and youngest council that anybody's ever had. So we have our senior staff here of two years and the rest of us are brand new. So for as long as anybody we've asked and nobody knows anybody's been any bit uh, any younger than that. So that's cool to be able to do that as well. So we're excited that. We're excited about all those things that have happened in North St. Paul over the last few years and the new stuff that is coming up as far as the new growth we had. And so that's very exciting for us as well. Um, I looked over some of this to try to figure out what does a mayor do? I mean, when you run for something, you gotta realize what you're gonna do. So I looked it over and I was able to pull up some information about to, is to be a mayor and also to be on the council. But I will pick on the mayor right now is, is that. So, you know, there's two different, two different styles of, mayor, of uh, governments. governance is you have the strong mayor, which is the partisan, which is the city of Minneapolis, St. Paul, we have Duluth, and um, in some of the other cities that are big. That's what they call the Plan A. North St. Paul, we have what they call a Plan B, which is considered a strong city manager as far as that. So on the, I'm gonna go off of that. So the council is very much more common to have what they call a strong city manager um, council. So that's the most popular in, North, in uh, Minnesota. So they consider that slash weak mayor, which, which is gonna be explained here. The council plan, the administrative done legally is done as the whole council. So together, we're the council and it's nonpartisan. The reason why it's designed that way is we continue. It's not gonna be going from one extreme to another. It's you find out what's best for the city and that's what we all are here for is what's best for the city. That's why it's nonpartisan. So that's, you, you're passing the baton. So as I mayor, and when, when we're done, you pass it on to the next group that's gonna do it. So that's why it's considered nonpartisan and it's the, the city manager. The city manager is the one that um, takes care of the day-to-day -day business. But the whole council is what, what it goes off of. Also it has here, I'm gonna read this part. It says the, um, has the, the mayor is no greater responsibilities than any other council members, except for they preside over ceremonies and they have some ceremonial duties plus some legal, so I sign things. So that's what the mayor is involved with when it comes to, the, to this kind of mayorship we have. Because when I was running for mayor and talking, looking into it, it was like, what does he actually do? And I think a lot of people don't realize. I didn't realize that there was different types of uh, councils and mayors. So it's good to understand what I'm getting into. Working in the industries and working a long time, I wanna have a job description. I wanna have what I'm responsible for, what I'm not responsible for, so people out there can understand what is, what is expected of this mayor and this council. City level, we're the city council. City leaders are in charge of uh, leadership, visionary as far as strategic planning, stewards of our resources. That's what the council does. City manager and his staff are responsible for carrying out uh, council visions and planning, responsible for day-to-day -day administration and operations under the city manager. So that's just the layout I wanted to give so we can all, all be on the same page. And I also looked up what makes a successful mayor, and this was on the, the website. A, sexual, a successful mayor has an attitude of humility. I agree with that, and it's, it, it's being able to work for the, for, the, for the constituents. It is reflects that, yes, you won an election, that's a significant accomplishment, but this is for you, my wife, you are no smarter than you were before the election. <laughs> I was really hoping I would get a little something, but nope. So that's where I sit. There is much to learn, and I agree with that as well. Successful mayors reject attitude of entitlement, which that's the way we're designed. The mayor does not have any more respond or many more powers than the council itself. We have other responsibilities, but no power. 
So, and that is held, and that also, it's, it's considered that for, because you're gonna be passing that on to, to another group of people. So that's where it sits with that. A made, uh, um, successful mayor leaders listen, respect others' opinions. And that's very much I wanna make sure. Because we have a great diverse group of people up here that grew up in different parts of the country, done different things, and that everybody has the right or the being able to get their opinion and be able to discuss it and be feel comfortable being able to do that. So that is a main thing as far as where I want to be with this because we're not any kind of entitlement as far as that. A successful mayor recognizes the difference between response and responsibility. This is important to recognize the public's interest is often different than a particular constituent's desires or needs. So we have to take the whole thing. So there may be something for some group that is, but we have to look at what's the whole needs of the community. Successful mayor knows <clears throat> that while it's sometimes appropriate to respond to needs for individual constituents, in other instances you must act in the betterment of the whole community even when other residents may not like it. It is essential to evaluate each discuss discussion against both principles and having the courage to act appropriately. So I think that's very important that we have to take a beat. And I asked Lisa that, I'm kind of a jump in the guy. I said, I need you to rein me in sometimes. So that's what's good about being able to have different opinions and understanding where everybody is. Successful mayors value partnerships and teamwork. And I think we're gonna make a great team up here by the discussions we've had. And mistakes will occur. So everybody knows we're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna learn from them. We're gonna do the best we can in the future, but we are gonna make mistakes. So we ask for everybody's, I don't know, what's the best word for that? Grace, thank you, thank you. Ask for everybody's grace because we are gonna make mistakes, but we're gonna learn and we're gonna keep moving forward. We're gonna do the best for our community as we possibly can. Successful mayor gathers their facts before making decisions. So we're gonna to try to be able to bring all the facts in. In some rare cases, like under, I'm sure with Mayor Furlong, when the whole world seems to be blowing apart the seams, there's gonna to have to be faster things made and sometimes you have to do that. But overall, we wanna make sure that we get as much knowledge as we can and being able to move forward the best we can with information we have. That's what I have. So I will call the meeting to order. Give me one second here to find this. This is gonna be cool. <laughs> oh, and I think uh, Mayor Furlong left this for me for big mistakes. <laughs> Uh, hopefully we don't have to pull it out too often. All right. Calling the meeting to order at 6.43. Now it's still me, isn't it? Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Girls, do you want to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance up front here? Come on, right up front. You can sit right, you can stand right in front of the flag there. Start it for us. Nice job, ladies. Roll call, please. Councilmember Cole. Here. Councilmember Schwer. Here. Councilmember Wong. Here. Councilmember Nordby. Here. Mayor Mongi. Here. I move. Is that the next thing? I move for adopt to adopt the agenda. I move to adopt the agenda. Anybody? So moved, Your Honor. Thank you. Second. I second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Presentations. Is there any presentation? No, I'm just going to go down the list. Maybe I don't have to announce it, but until somebody says stop saying that stuff, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Consent agenda. 
Anybody have what they would like to pull out of the consent agenda? Maybe I could read it over quick for you and then we oh, can yeah. just go from there. So thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you. Item A, December 20th, 2022, regular meeting minutes. Uh, item B, general claims of $436,443.16. Item C, HRA claims of $129.43. And item D, the 2023 commission appointments. Anybody like to pull any out? I would like to pull D, please. Thank you. Do I call the meeting to open to the public, right? Okay. okay. Call the meeting we open. We have to approve the consent agenda first. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Everybody approving the, can I get approval of this consent agenda, please? So moved, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Cole, any second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks for the reminder. Now, if we're good, I can open the meeting to the public. Open the meeting to the public at 6.46. We have one, Mr. Smalls. Please do your address and we got our three minutes. Thank you. John Schmall, 2750 Chisholm Avenue, North St. Paul. I learned something from Dave Nelson just a little while ago where we were talking. He says if your snowblower clogs up, before you go out, spray the chute and the inner, in, internals with WD-40, and it'll slide off. Well, I don't have, I got WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have the clock? Uh, you do have the clock, okay. Uh, since this is so limited, I didn't. I brought this up before and didn't have the chance to complete it. And the subject is the sidewalk that's proposed for 11th on the north side, which would serve. If you put a sidewalk there, half of it would probably serve the muskrats that are in Target Pond or whatever it is. It is not. It is not a sidewalk that has any need. If you want a sidewalk area that would have a need, go to, on a summer's night, uh, to the area of Shawnee and Gerald, going to Casey Park. There will be people with little children, people with dogs, people with strollers coming from, I guess it's not correct to say from the reservation area, but the area with all the Indian tribes and names on it. You would need, almost need uh, someone uh, there to uh, control traffic. Now there's an area where you need a sidewalk to serve the area to the, to the east, all of those homes that bring people in. Run a sidewalk from, what is it, um, Oh, the northern park that's in the area that's just the short distance off of Helen. I forget what the name of it is. But there's a need for sidewalks. You don't need a sidewalk on 11th. There's nothing there on the, on the north side except for a strip mall, again, Target Pond, and the backyards of three houses. There's no need for it. But there is a need at Shawnee and serving the area coming from the east. Is that, that the one that kind of loops down a hill and turns? Well, it's uh, not really. It's, uh, uh, it is served by a uh, uh, marked pedestrian crossing of McKnight yep. coming, from, coming from the east. It's just I can't figure out why anybody would want to put a sidewalk on 11th that has absolutely no uh, drawing card, whatever, people walking. And if you did have a sidewalk there, the only reason you'd be there is that you'd want to go over, cross the street to go to Target. I went by today and yesterday, and there was an individual at the bus stop area on 11th who had to probably cross over from the Target area. And that's not even marked at this particular point in time. Thank you. Thank you. Those notes, appreciate it. All 
right, uh, we'll close the, unless there's anybody else, I'll close the public hearing at 6.50. there okay and it's going to be city business that's you sir i can take that thank you so <clears throat> this will be for the 2023 annual resolutions um well the first up is the annual resolution appointing investment committee for 2023 um so the city council of minneapolis sees the benefit of investing in public funds to general additional non-tax revenues for city purposes the council created an investment committee to assist the city manager and finance director in reviewing and monitoring the city's investment portfolio. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city council and the city of North St. Paul, that the following persons are hereby appointed to the investment committee for fiscal year 2023. Um, John Mangi, mayor, Ryan Frandel, city manager, and Dan Linick, finance director. Um, so this is in front of you for um, approving that resolution. That's the first one. So I think we should do them one by one. And All right. Can I get a motion on that one? Can we repeat it or? I'm sorry. Oh, we want to wait for new people to do it? <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Thank you, Mr. Cole. <laughs> Second. Second. Come on, new boys, let's go. See what happens let's when you sit by All me. All in favor? Yeah. Say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up is the Depository Bank for City Funds and Securities. Um, so Premier Bank is hereby designated as the official depository for the City of North St. Paul. Um, that checks of the city drawn on any of the official depositories shall be signed by the following officers, Mayor John Mongi, City Manager Brian Frandel, and Finance Director Dan Winnick. And this appoints also Finance Director as the official City Treasurer. Um, we're also looking for a resolution of approval for this as well. Anyone want to move that motion? I'll move that motion. Thank you. Gregory? Second? Second. Norby? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Um, so next up is the uh, resolution appointing uh, re retaining Campbell Knutson Law Firm as the City Attorney for 2023. I'll therefore be it resolved that the City Council of the City of North St. Paul, the Campbell Knutson Law Firm be and hereby is retained as the City Attorney for the year 2023 with Soren Maddock being the primary contact. Uh, looking for a resolution for the acceptance of that. So moved. Come along. Second. Second. McCroll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next up is the annual resolution approving Minneapolis Star Tribune as the official newspaper for 2023. And we're looking for vote for resolution for that. All in favor of one? I'll move. I move. Cassie? I can move. Schreer. <laughs> I'm in front of everybody except you, Cassie. Schreer. Councilmember Schreer, any second? Second. Second. Councilmember Cole. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, thank you. Next up, resolution uh, for annual appointing acting mayor for 2023. Um, so this will be uh, designating the acting mayor when Mayor Mangi is not present, and that was for. Uh, City Council Member Lisa Wong is hereby designated as Acting Mayor during the calendar year of 2023. Looking for a resolution of approval. So moved. Approved by Mr. Cole. Second? I'll second. Second by Cassie. It's <laughs> rare. <laughs> sorry, thank you. Oh, approved, I'm sorry. Say aye. 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 Uh, next up is item D that was pulled from the consent agenda for the 2023 commission appointment. And I'll turn that over to you, Mayor, for pulling that and wanting to go through that. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So as far as the 
the um, appointments. The mayor does the appointments, but I want to make sure that uh, we have all the information together and we do it as a, as a group. So I'm trying to, uh, as a group, how do we want to handle that? Because I think we'd, as far as going in front of us all and we'd be able to discuss and be able to, to vote on that or as any commissioners. Anybody see any issues or everything seems okay with that? I'd like to, because we all have the vote, we all have an equal vote, like when I read it, so I want to make sure that everybody gets the information they need so they can do the vote. So um, as far as bringing that uh, right now, I'm not sure how they did it before, so as far, it's a little bit, a little bit different with that, so the candidates fill out the, the form online, and then from there it goes to the council. You think that's going to be the best way as far as that, uh, Mayor Frandel? I'm Mayor Frandel. <laughs> City manager for Randall? Turning that over already. Yeah, I'm turning over already. Wow. How many minutes did I make it? Let me see there. Please. Uh, so that's, we're looking at, we want to be able to do that, bring it in front, so we have to figure out the best way to be able to get the candidates and uh, the information in front of the whole council. And, and did you want to go over that with the commission or the members for the commissions or? Yeah, um, as far as the ones we have now as liaisons. Okay, yep, I'll do over that. This is also the, the part of trying to pick the other commissioners. I do not have a list of lists that's on here of who's doing what. Item A. Give me one second. And if I'm missing something, let me know. I believe the document you're looking for is page 24. 24, thank you. It's a brand new computer tonight too, we just got them, so we're really styling. There we go, thank you so much. So, Economic Development Authority is gonna have myself on it and Tim Cole, and then uh, we also, do I read oh, just everybody that's on it now or just the ones from us? The ones that are on the, the city, mem the liaisons. Um, yes, and I apologize, I should have forwarded that, but we're having error with the city translation. Um, but yeah, so we do take on the city manager. But just the council people, not the... For now, yes. Yes, that's why I want to make sure, I because there are some names on here, I don't know if I had to read them all. So that's I'm EDA is myself and Mr. Cole. We have housing, and that's going to be uh, housing and redevelopment. That is, looks like everybody on that one. We have parks and rec. That is going to be Cassidy, correct? Correct. Thank you. Arts and culture is going to be Lisa. Planning commission is going to be Jason Stormy. Is there any other one I need to go over? These other ones? Associations, the rest are organizations. Will that do it? For the council, yes. Okay. Um, and we're looking for a, a approval of resolution. Now that I read them all, approve it. Okay, can I get a resolution as far as a, somebody to bring it up? So moved, Your Honor. So moved, Mr. Cole. Council Member Cole. Second, Mr. Second. Second, Mr. Normie. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> say it loud, say it proud. All right. Are you looking to discuss the commission appointments for the individual um, commissions, whether or not it's the- Residents, you mean? Yes. Well, we kind of, that's what I started with. I apologize. I didn't, no didn't know that was it. So we just talked about being more open. So I think we'll probably do a workshop is kind of what we discussed. You can remind me to make sure. So we'll do a workshop with uh, all the people that are, uh, as far as I think we only have uh, one right now, as far as uh, anybody who's filled out to be part of a, any kind of a committee. So hopefully we'll get more. I've been asking people. So, but that's where we're at. And then we'll bring them in front of the whole, the whole council will have questions. We need to figure out the questions, so we ask uh, the same questions. We need to figure out the questions we're going to do. Um, I go ahead. I, 
leave, um, do you wanna at least prove the people that are on those commissions now so we can move forward with them being on those commissions during the first meetings? Okay. Um, the concern in waiting is there are a couple of commissions we may not have forums, we may sure. not have a quorum to be able to conduct a meeting. All right, thank you. I'll go over that then. So I'll just read off the names? Please. All right. We'll go back to um, economic development. We got John Mongi, Tim Cole, Terry Furlong, Robert Dew, Tom Schiffsky, Archie Fickerman, Kevin Fuller, uh, Brent Gary, Brian Frandel, Brandy Howe, and Chris, how do you say that? Churn. What? Churn. Churn? Thank you. Are we good there? Do we have to vote on it? Or is that just read through them all, then vote? Is that what you want? All right. Just, just yell it out. I'm used to taking it. <laughs> <laughs> Housing and Redevelopment Authority. We have uh, John Mangi, Lisa Wong, Tim Cole, Jason Norby, Cassidy Schreer. They were right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Brian, Sh Brian Frandel, and Jenny Kloos. Thank you. All right, then we go to Parks and Rec. Lloyd. What's that? Great check. Great check? Thank you very much. You're going to have to help me on this. Uh, Laura Greenlee Harp, Carp. I apologize for everybody that I'm butchering their names. Sarah Zaraka, Zaraka thank you. Arthur Alvarez. Alvarez, okay. Then we got Ingrid Cole. Sure. Kohler, sorry, yep, Kohler. Um, Susan Springborn. And we have, is that a name? Joe Officer? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right, Joe Officer. And we'll go on to arts and culture. We have Lisa Wong, that's name's not on there right now. Is it? Nope. Lisa Wong, we have uh, Tom Sonic. We have Carrie Nadu. Nadu, thank you. Stacy Marr. Marr? Marr. Yep. Um, C. Yang. And Emily Hag. Oh, that's Hag. Glenn. Okay, thank you. And we have Lisa Ritchie and Amanda Black and Sarah Lang. Right now, we have on the Planning Commission. Are we good still? Okay. Eric Brenna. We have Andrew Weiss. We have Cameron Mukic. Patrick Bleese. Randy Howe is the representative, and Chris, one more time, maybe I'll get it. What's his last name? Chris? Churn. Churn, thank you. Sorry. All right. Do I need to go through the police civil and all that too, or not? Is that good? Can just approve the resolution, please? All right. So a resolution, anybody willing to start off? A motion to move. Cassidy, second? Second. Second, Lisa Wong. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. You're looking at me like I should do something. <laughs> no, I think you got it. All right. <laughs> we'll move into uh, reports of the city manager for the department. Item C for the vacation carryover. So during the pandemic in the last few years, um, people in some departments have found it hard to years, use up their vacation time by the end of the year. Um, normally it's a use it or lose it by the end of the year and we had been a little flexible with that going through the issues that we've been having, whether or not it's shortages on employees and people and having people do a lot of overtime, um, not having time to do that um, they've done it a couple different ways over the last couple of years where they've either paid them out or they've allowed rollover. Um, what I'm asking from you guys this evening is to approve a rollover of the vacation time um, and that is a 20% maximum rollover. So people that have, have worked here for up to 15 years 
can accumulate up to 160 hours of vacation time, and 15 years and past is you can accumulate up to 240 vacation hours. So what we're doing is we're doing 20% of that maximum for people who have more than that. So um, people who have worked here for less than 15 years can roll over 32 hours, and people here longer than 15 years can roll over up to 48 hours. And that's, that's no payout for them. It's just the rolling over of those extra hours. There are very few people that will actually lose time, um, but I've uh, been in discussion with them and just expressed the importance of people using their vacation time and you know having their time away as well. So um, that's what I'm asking for this evening. Great. Right. Anyone want a question? Did you have? I have I have questions, but I have I see others as well. Okay. Um, Brian, just for clarity, is this the twenty percent? Is that the twenty percent of calendar year twenty twenty two's unused that's rolling, or is it twenty percent of the max cap that they can roll? The latter, twenty percent of the max cap. Okay. Thank you. My question for Brian is, when employees are accruing their time, say your employee has 160 hours, are, you, are the employees able to, we'll say that they rolled over 160, are they still accruing in 2023, or do they stop accruing at 160? They keep accruing. So okay. you are rolling over your maximum. Um, and I'm actually one of those people that uh, I tend to roll over a maximum. You just don't know what life's going to throw you. So I like to have that cushion on the books, whether or not it's uh, helping out a family member or what have you. Um, so there are a lot of people that do that. Um, not all of them, of course. But yeah, so you're, you're starting off the new year with your maximum. OK, thanks. Yes, Lisa. Can you explain a little bit about where the 20% came from, how that was determined? Um, there was no scientific evaluation, if you will, but uh, it, it was trying to give the employees, um, you know, acknowledging that, you know, the last couple of years have been tough. There's been times that it's been harder to take the vacation time. A lot of people are just at home with their staycations. Um, to recognize that it's been an issue the past couple of years, but also emphasizing you, it's really important that you have to start using this time. So 20% was... It, not an overbearing number to where people were rolling over, you know, double what their max was or anything like that, but just acknowledging that, uh, you know, we see the issue and but we want to do better, and this is the last year that we're doing that. So anything moving forward, it's uh, if you don't use it, um, you lose it. How many employees are going to lose it? As far as actual vacation time, I could probably count on one hand how many people <laughs> will actually lose time. Maybe two. Um, so probably under 10 people anyway. Okay. Will an additional 20% put a strain? I'm trying to do the math in my head. Will that put a strain on the 2023 budget? No, we, we can absorb that. Um, and actually, that being able that you're taking time off um, it's not necessarily just a payout of the extra amount on the bill, so they are taking that time away. We're not paying it out. So the city is accruing for it. Okay. And just again, one, one point for clarity. So a 15 year plus employee who is allowed to carry over to maintain a maximum of 30 days in what I consider the bank. Um, they would be able to carry over up to six unused days from 2022. But it, when 2020, at the end of 2023, that max returns to 30 days, not 36. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Any more questions? So now we bring that up for. Anybody want to move for approval? Move for approval, okay. Councilmember Norby, I have a second. 
I'll second. Second. Cassidy. All those in favor say aye. 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 One last thing on the topic. Um, I, I firmly believe that what the, the city has done, and it's, it's a difficult topic because there's some of you in the room. I think the city's done a very good job of, of attempting to take care of city employees and city staff in, in what's really been three unprecedented years, per se. Um, but I sincerely hope that every staff member gets back to taking their allotted vacation. It's needed for mental health. It's needed for just to get away. Um, so I thank everyone for their dedication, but I certainly hope that going forward, they're able to, to capitalize on, on this and take that time off to get away. And, you know, give, it just, it's just good to get away. 100% <laughs> agree. Council Member Cole, that's, that's exactly what it's there for. On that note, if you don't mind, um, I, this will be brought to the next council meeting as well. Um, so the, the PD, the police department is um, a little different animal when it comes to the vacation time. Um, they have what's called, um, their holiday time is given to them 96 hours at the beginning of the year and they use it whenever they can. So it's almost like a vacation day for them. Um, they also have what's called suspense balance. And in an ideal world, when so they work uh, 12 on, 12 off and they do that um, for consecutive days, I forget the number of days, but at the end of a two week pay period, in ideal world, they've got their 80 hours in. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. Somebody else is off, somebody has to cover for that, and that's where the suspense time is. So somebody can come in and work when they normally wouldn't be working. Um, other departments would call that comp time, but it's more suspense time for them. Um, that one's a little more tricky because these guys have already uh, put the time in for these hours and uh, we'll have a resolution coming to you at the next appointment meeting to discuss those and what we can do with that. Uh, and the idea of moving forward would be to pay them out for that. And it comes out to under 300 hours, but um, you know it comes up to close to $20,000 to, to pay out for that suspense time. Um, but I'll have more detail for that for the next time, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention at this point. Thank you. Next thing will be reports, city manager and departments, is that correct? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, so we had a staff meeting today. Um, the fire department um, did notify us that uh, they had another uh, record year of 1,605 calls for the year. Um, they will be bringing down uh, a breakdown of statistics of what those calls were and where they went um, at a future date. Um, electric department is now taking down the Christmas decorations. Um, they've got uh, people that have been off to the training down in Marshall where we have uh, MM or Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association has their training center. So we just had three guys come back from there. Um, we have the auditors in town here this Thursday and Friday. Um, we'll be doing the audit. They'll be going down to the electric department to do inventory. Um, so I'll be down there with uh, John. This will be his first year for doing that with the auditors. Um, Public Works clearly is busy with all the snow. They do have uh, four rinks up. Um, and I think that is all I have you for you for right now. And that's John Wick. John Wick. Just to make sure. Correct, yes, yes. He is our electric director. Mm -hmm. Nothing further. General business, how do we handle that? Just go, uh, is that just to go around each each council person? I think reports of. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. I already checked it. I apologize. I did it early. Reports are council uh, commissions and committees. We only have two. So, <laughs> right now. Go for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the Arts and Culture Commission will have their first meeting of the year tomorrow. Um, they will be revisiting um, Project Snowy, um, and they are also exploring different codes around um, um, arts in different communities, and they're also considering um, a student commissioner, a non-voting, um, so that will be really exciting okay. for the group. Um, again, their meeting's tomorrow at 6.30, um, I believe, in the chambers. 
<laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> well, it's fitting Project Snowy because we got it all out there. Councilmember Cole, do you have anything? Uh, Park and Rec Commission, uh, no update. The December meeting was canceled due to snow. <laughs> um, so the next meeting will be here in Chamber, Com Chamber Commerce, Chambers, where? Right here. Right here. <laughs> uh, January 25th at 6.30. Uh, and the next EDA meeting will be Tuesday the 10th at 3 o'clock, also in Council Chambers. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for the updates. Yeah. Got you covered, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? So we go to now. We go to general business. Now, general business is that just going around uh, each? Yep. Okay. Do you have anything? Anything yet, Councilmember Norby? Nope. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Councilmember Wong. Um, I just want to say that I'm looking forward to working with this new council and. Um, there's a, a polar plunge coming that the PD and the FD do um, over at uh, White Bear Lake. So I encourage everyone to consider. <laughs> Councilmember Wong, are you joining again this year? You know, I happen to be out of town. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I believe it's uh, January 28th. Um, yeah. But it, I did do it last year, and it was a really great event. It's for the Special Olympics, and um, it's, a, it's a great time and um, good energy. So. I'll have to check the warranty on my fake hip, knee, and shoulder to see if that's allowed. <laughs> yes. I am with Councilmember Wong. I look forward to working with everyone here as well, and I also look forward to working with everyone in the community. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so Member Cole. Uh, I reiterate what the other two have said. This is going to be a fun next couple years. I'm sincerely looking forward to uh, it, it, it's going to be fun. It's, it's um, you know, to be two two years up here along with Councilmember Wong and to be considered senior is a bit scary. <laughs> but uh, but we definitely look forward to it, and we'll all learn. We'll all learn and grow and continue. Uh, I do have one event to bring up. Um, f the Fire and Ice Festival uh, is this Saturday, January the seventh, uh, from five to eight o'clock at Housie Park. Uh, there's ice skating, hot chocolate, and Sue, am I missing anything? Bonfire. Bonfire, thank you. So everybody show up. It's a lot of fun. Family friendly. Awesome. PD and Fire will be there. PD and Fire will be there as well. Good. Did I miss anything, Brian? Looking good. Okay. <laughs> for myself, I wanted to bring up that uh, we're looking at doing the um, workshops for just an hour, starting at 5.30 to 6.30. So I think that would be good. We, we're blessed with everybody up here that has a full-time job. So we want to make sure it's, it's a, I think we can get it in. Usually like anything else, how much time you get is how much time you take. So we're going to do an hour. And uh, if there's anything special, Brian's going to let us know as far as if it's open, be too much for that amount of time. But we will do the workshops from 530 to 630. I will be on vacation the next meeting. My ride and I are going to uh, Florida, so Council Member Wong will be running the meeting. And anything else I can think of? So hit it and head out of town. Um, the other thing, too, is what I'd like to bring up as far as uh, I appreciate. I've um, been asking for help for the council. I have dyslexia pretty bad, so my reading is not the best. So I did make it through tonight, but there's going to be times where I'm going to ask uh, for help with certain things. So... Uh, the council's been very nice. Uh, Brian has been very nice to be able. So we all have limitations, and we all have things we're good at. And meetings are long and long, long enough without me uh, reading everything aloud to you people. So just so you know, that's all I have. No closed session this evening. None there. Adjournment. All right. Can I call for adjournment? Come on, you guys. I'll second that. We haven't been firsted, but so, go for I'll, it. I'll first that I'll motion. First. <laughs> Come on, Jason. Step up, buddy. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Good job. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Aye.